I am a little bit sad about it. Most likely we're gonna go back and this is the end of the season. I'm Giulia and I'm Italian and he's Mess from Denmark. And this is our home, Alba. After years living in the city, we gave in to the call of adventure and moved on a sailboat. We're currently sailing in the south of Italy, along the coast of Sicily. Subscribe to the channel and join us aboard for new adventures every week. In the previous episode, we landed on the Aeolian Islands and learned to adapt to the will of the gods. Today, the wind forces us to leave the island of Vulcano and seek refuge elsewhere, in a place equally shrouded in mystery. The high rocks that rise before us are the dangerous wandering rocks. The sorceress Circe, our precious guide on this journey, warned us against these towers, ancient volcanic rocks eroded by wind and waves, where sea and fire leave no escape for sailors. As we passed, however, all seemed calm. The sea was calm, the lava had stopped flowing long ago, and the two towers of solidified magma did not seem to threaten us. We left our mooring at Marina di Vulcanello, the Vulcano Island. We crossed the so-called Bocche di Vulcano, so the strait between the Vulcano Island and Lipari, the other island. We passed by the beautiful Faraglioni, which are these very tall cliffs, monolites coming out of the water. Uh, and now we are at an anchorage, which hopefully is going to be protected for the night. There are quite many boats, many catamarans. I think we are just basically two or three monohulls. So all the others are catamarans. Um, very beautiful here. There is a beach and there are cliffs to explore, no buildings at all, so it's very wild. Uh, now we're gonna go and check on the anchor. We anchored in 8-9 meters and we gave almost 40 meters of chain, so should be quite safe. I dived on the anchor, everything looks fine. The wind is supposed to pick up later, in a little bit, in a couple of hours, I think. Uh, for now, we're just gonna have lunch and rest and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. I must confess something that I still cannot explain. In the last period, I've begun to see the world in a new light. It seems to me that I have lived for so many years according to abstract rules and principles dictated by who knows who, in order to achieve who knows what. As if what I had around me and within me had always been clouded by my fears. But a closer and freer look at this world has revealed to me that its richness is immense, and it is up to us to understand it. I'm not just talking about the beauty that surrounds us, but about something deeper, which we cannot see or explain or even feel fully. From time to time, we can only perceive its impalpable energy, like a breath of wind behind a light veil. But when we try to focus on it, our senses fall short. They are not sharp enough to understand what it is. And when I talk about it, the only word, perhaps a little childish, that comes to me is magic. My paddling adventure went fine. Uh, I, I managed to come back despite wind and current that were against me. And now Mess is over there paddling. He, he's actually just reached the shore. Let's see if he's gonna be able to come back. Uh, meanwhile, I think I'm gonna make some pancakes because yeah, I don't really feel like being much in the water even though I think snorkeling around here is nice, but uh, it, the water is not that warm anymore. Uh, so why not just yeah, chilling and making some good food and uh, relaxing. I 
I don't see him anymore. If I'm alone now, I can basically give pancakes to the entire bay. No fixed gender roles on this boat. Mess is uh, cooking tonight and I'm going out. I'm going outside to prepare everything for the night. Close the lazy bag, tie up all the sails and, and remove anything that we left outside. We both need to be able to do everything. Hi friends, this morning we woke up in the middle of a sea of uncertainties because the weather doesn't really look good. Uh, it looks like it's gonna blow a lot from south to north. Too much for us to cross the Messina Strait. There is a bad weather system over the next 10 days, which means that we will not be able to make it back to our home port before the end of the holidays. That means that today we may have to sail back to mainland, either Sicily or Calabria, and then tomorrow cross the Messina Strait and go back and basically our cruise is over. I am a little bit sad about it because I had a lot of uh, expectations for this holiday. I was really hoping to spend two weeks sailing around on Alba and just yeah, experience the islands without tourists. But of course we took a risk. We know that we took a risk um, by coming here in, at the end of the season. That's the, the price to pay. So yeah, this morning we woke up, tried to enjoy the sunrise outside, drank a cup of coffee and now we're waiting for um, the update forecast that should come at a quarter to nine and uh, yeah we're gonna look at the forecast most likely we're gonna um, go back and this is the end of the season but yeah let's see when thoughts swirl around my head I sit down and start writing to try to grab them one by one and anchor them to a journal page so that they can leave room for stillness in my mind I don't just do this for the weather, but for all kinds of choices. You may argue that yes, coming back from a holiday early because of the weather is unpleasant, but it is not the end of the world. And I can only agree with you. In fact, it isn't just about that. The point is that our choices determine who we are. Like so many small pieces, the decisions we make every day shape our identity. And who am I? A person who always retraces her steps? Who chooses a monotonous but safe life? Or a person capable of living life to its fullest despite the risks. I believe that both paths are full of obstacles and it's up to us to decide which problems we're willing to solve. The important thing to remember is that every choice we make defines who we are and shapes our world. Validation. Do you see? Last week, Bio One was best, then GFS, then ECM. It looks a bit better than it used to. So now we have PVE here. So this one has changed, changed so much. changed so much because this was the full purple. So in the end, it isn't as bad as it looked yesterday. Um, it looks like we have some more days to spend around here at Anchorages because it's not going to be much wind at night. And that, that very bad weather system that we could see in the forecast yesterday seems to be a bit milder uh, than it looked yesterday. We're going to hang around a little bit more uh, and today we're going to... Panaria.
And so this time we chose to look our demons in the eyes, to step out of our comfort zone and try to catch a glimpse of something more, dwelling between the visible layers of this mysterious world. And having pulled up the anchor and hoisted the sails, our Alba harnessed the magic of the wind and cast what to me, after years and years of sailing, still seems like a spell, upwind sailing. And there, on the northern edge of the channel of Salina, the strait between Lipari and Salina, our sorceress Circe left the crew and returned to her home on the legendary island of Ia, that is, Salina. This time we could not stay with her, but we promised to visit her again soon. And grateful for her valuable advice, and with our eyes a little more trained to discern the secrets of these seas, we continued sailing towards Panarea. Despite the higher waves and the stronger than expected gusts, we were right in our decision to continue the journey. And like pieces of metal attracted by a magnet, we let ourselves be carried away by the energy of the place we chose to reach, or perhaps we were bound to reach. We have arrived in Panarea, we anchored in this bay called Cala del Junco. It's so beautiful, there are only three other boats. There is a real cove uh, here, I'm gonna go and check it out. I think I can reach it just swimming or, or with a pedal board. Uh, and then there are supposed to be some archaeological remains. There is an archaeological site up here on the Cape, so I'm also gonna check that out. Um, yeah, and it uh, looks very nice. I'm happy we found a spot because uh, this is really a place I wanted to visit. Cala del Junco, a bay where volcanic walls envelop the abysses in a multi-millennial embrace. Where the spirits of ancient sources still watch from the heights of the Neolithic dwellings, somehow surviving an eternity of storms. Here, the infinite ocean is reduced to a shape, confined to an iridescent emerald blue mirror. But what will appear to our eyes when we cross the mirror? There, on the boundary line, my gaze has met the power of choice. That act, so difficult, so full of hopes and fears, that reduces an infinity of possibilities to a single, limited reality. A bit like when looking at the weather forecast, between the 360 degrees of the compass, we have to choose a single course. And a bit like at Cala del Junco, the embrace of the rocks encloses the great sea and confines it to a small lagoon. But that lagoon, did we really choose it, or was it already written in our stars? This, I do not know. I often ask myself that, but I don't know. And in a way, it isn't important. When the fog of our fears clears from the sea of our minds, we can see clearly what our heart's cause is. And if it is with self-respect that we chose our coordinates, perhaps it doesn't matter if they were already noted down somewhere in the Book of the Gods. Either way, they will be the right ones for us. And while admiring this place, part material, part spiritual, I see it at an intersection of two worlds. Over here is our everyday life, with all our anxieties, worries and fears. But beyond, there is another universe into which we occasionally dare to trespass. It isn't so much a parallel universe as a truer world, 
where, without the burden of our fears, we can let ourselves be enveloped in magic. And our lagoon, today Cala del Yungo, tomorrow who knows where else, will not just be a point of arrival, but a magical portal to new choices and new adventures. Don't miss the next episode in which we'll sail to the island of Lipari and maybe make a pretty bad decision.